All right, let me show you guys where, where money's going right now. This is gonna be our new tortoise enclosure. We have a Salcata tortoise that's in California en route right now to Arizona to get picked up by us this weekend. Um, she's a Salcata. It's one of the largest, the third largest tortoise species in the world. So they'll get to be like 100 pounds. Um, the males can be up to 200 pounds and they live like 100 years. Um, so this is gonna be her enclosure. Connor is working on putting rebar into our concrete moat because Salcata tortoises are really good at digging. Um, so we've had to bury concrete and bury rebar around the edges of her enclosure um, so that she can't get out because she can't survive on her own in the wild, just like all the animals we have here. This is Connor. He's our operations manager. He's having a really good time today. <laughs> um, this tortoise, someone bought as a pet at like a reptile expo when she was just like a little golf ball sized baby tortoise. Um, I guess not thinking about the commitment that you have to make to an animal that lives 100 years and grows to be 100 pounds. She's, they've had her for four years and are now moving. Um, so they just left her with another family when they moved who cannot take care of her. So that's how we're getting her. Yeah, we got raided by Pirate Software. Yeah! Damn. Is that normal? Uh, You're gonna have to cut these. I might have to cut them. Button, Louis, just resubscribed. Button, months. thank you. And I cut 140 pieces of rebar. That's crazy. With what? Bolt cutters. Oh my god! <laughs> that sucks. They'll be in the vlog. Have fun. Um, so yeah, we're going to get a tortoise. Uh, Salcata tortoises are endangered in the wild. They're from Africa. And one of the reasons they're endangered is because of competition with beef uh, cattle. Our demand for beef is so high and our demand for cheap beef is so high that we've expanded um, into places like Africa um, and the Amazon rainforest. Uh, and we clear cut a lot of land and put a bunch of cattle there uh, to export, import into the US as, as cheap beef. Um, but it's been detrimental to the species that already live there that the cattle are now taking over the space of. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is the pet trade. People think that they want a giant tortoise and then can't have them for a hundred years. So, not ideal. Welcome to the fox enclosure. We have two American red foxes. Their names are Finn and Reed. So we have two American red foxes. This is Finn, he's one of them. He's obviously not red. Um, and that's because he was born in captivity for the pet trade. He was actually confiscated from the illegal pet trade in California. Um, and that's how we got him. So he was confiscated by uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife because someone tried to have him as a pet. This chicken. Russian underscore X just resubscribed for four that's months. Nice. Um, so with these two guys, um, tell people that one, you don't want foxes as pets, um, and two, you don't want to wear foxes either. Uh, the fur industry is pretty gnarly, and a lot of foxes are farmed for their fur, um, which is super sad. This is our other fox. His name is Reed. Here you go. Reed was born in the wild, is also an American red fox, probably what you're used to seeing as a red fox because he was born in the wild. He was orphaned in the wild though and was raised by rehabilitators in California. Um, and that's, uh, that's why he's under human care as well. You see that? I just threw it over there. Over there. Just nice. Um, what kind of treats do they get? They love scrambled egg. They love chicken. Um, peanut butter is a treat as well. Uh, but their diet is mostly, they get a formulated fox kibble um, and then they get whole prey as well. So sometimes rats, mice, um, they'll get fruits and vegetables. They're omnivores. So they'll eat lots of different types of produce and scrambled eggs. Yeah, I think that's all. They're all asking why they're the same but different. Why is Finn, didn't I say that? Am I crazy? Reed is a red fox that was born in the wild. Finn was, is gray because he was born in captivity for the pet trade. Somebody wanted a fox as a pet, but they wanted it to look cool and rare. And so they, they breed foxes to be different colors. Um, is that why Finn's coat is fluff? Sir, he's taking my pouch. It's not for you. 
There's nothing else in here. No! No, I don't know exactly why Finn's coat is fluffier, um, but they get way fluffier in the winter. They're both pretty slim in the summer. Do they get along? Yeah, they do. Um, is it mixed with some kind of dog? Okay, interesting question. Okay, so the other reason you may be asking, it's not just color, I realize. Their faces look, Finn, their faces look super different too, right? Like Finn has kind of a smushed dog-like face. The reason for that is when people breed foxes to be pets, the things that they want out of a domestic or a captive bred fox is a short snout. Drake is 99, just resubscribed for three months. Thank you. People want a short snout because they think it's cuter. People want floppy ears because they think it's cuter. People want a bunch of different colors because they think it's cuter. Um, people want them to be friendly, uh, fluffy, and they want them to act like dogs. So at the end of the day, what they really want is a dog. Um, they just want it to be a little cooler, which ends up just being super unfair to these animals, right? Is because they're not a dog. Um, they, they don't act like dogs. They need to be outside. Uh, they need a ton of space. They can be super destructive. They scent post on everything, which means anything new that we put in their enclosure, they pee on, they poop on, um, and that's their nature. Uh, but then people get them thinking it'll be cool to have a fox and then they end up at places like this Which we do our best, but it's nothing like the life that they could have in the wild um, but Finn was born into it and never had a choice um, But most foxes that are bred for the pet trade that end up in people's homes and then they can't have them or they surrender them or Whatever uh, are not this lucky um, a lot of times they'll bounce around a bunch of different homes and people have them until they realize they can't. So, yeah, it's pretty sad. Will you enlarge the enclosure at any point? Uh, not this enclosure, no. When we got them, they were in a five by 10, which is one of me by two of me, and it was just a concrete pad, which is obviously awful. This enclosure is 40 feet by 26, um, so it's pretty large. Uh, we also have a 50 by 30 foot training center. We would love to be able to bring the foxes down to there um, eventually so that they can have time in another space. Um, but this is the size of, of their enclosure. A lot probably get euthanized as well. Yeah. Are they fully grown? They are. Yeah, they are fully grown. Yeah, we have thought about adding another tree house. How do they stink? They're stinky. Foxes are real musky. They, um, they smell like skunk. Their enclosure smells like skunk. Um, Inside, it's real bad. They have an inside space with AC and heating. Uh, out here, it's not as bad because it's wire, so it's basically like open air. Um, but they are real stinky boys. Do you have inverts? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I love, love invertebrates. Uh, we do have bugs. We have Madagascar hissing cockroaches. We have isopods. We got scorpions. We got millipede. Um, hoping to expand expand that group of ambassadors this year.